Um, I've been really into creating jewelry this past year, especially since I got my ears pierced. I've been getting so many necklaces, earrings, all of that just added up and it costs way more than it should have. Um... So I decided to start making my own necklaces. I realized that making it's pretty doable, like even though like at first it seems really daunting, it's actually pretty fun. It's also fun creating your own designs and I'm also super particular about like my ideal necklace. So I feel like I spend so much time planning things out and then I just like sit there and like I think about it for a really long time I'm like oh did I did I choose the right combination of beads or something and I'm just like sitting there and just staring blankly at the necklace and it's also really concerning if you're like another person seeing me do this like it's a little creepy for this tutorial I'm gonna keep it super simple well I'll try my best too but it, it is pretty simple I also realize I really like pearl like See all that pearl and then also pearl, pearl. So here are the supplies we'll be needing. So first is stringing wire. I like to use the metal wire for the durability. You'll also need beads, toggle clasps, or lobster clasps, crimp beads, a crimp bead cover, jump rings, pliers, scissors or wire cutters, and a binder clip. So I'll also link down below where I got most of my items. Yeah, so let's get started. So step one is mapping out your beads. This is obviously optional, but I find that it's really helpful to set a general idea or theme for a design. I also really like using the beadsmith board. It's really useful for when you want to plan out the design without the beads rolling all over the place, and you can easily measure the length that you want especially if you're using mainly larger beads. But I'm running low on like the larger beads, so I'm sticking to mainly seed beads to use, which is why my board is super empty. Probably thinking that it's just a necklace and it's not that serious, but it makes me happy planning it, so. So step two is to begin stringing your beads. So here I'm struggling to take out my wire, but I eventually get it out. And once you get it out, um, measure and estimate the length that you want by using the measuring tool or by wrapping it around your neck. And make sure you add an extra inch or two and then snip off the wire. Here I'm also planning out which colors to use for my seed beads. Here's my little bead lineup. And now take your binder clip and clip at the end of your wire. I also like to pour out my seed beads onto my board um, since it makes the process a little bit easier and faster than if I were just like hand stringing it. Let me know if you know any like easier ways. And I'm starting off with a row of seed beads and while I'm making the necklace I'm creating a system to the number of beads and sometimes I do this with the colors. Also incorporate like, like Morse code to add like another layer of meaning into your necklace. And speaking of Morse code jewelry, I got my friend and I matching Morse code bracelets that say best is here it is. So now I'm just stringing my beads on and please ignore the huge packs of toilet paper behind me. Um, it kind of looks like I'm working in a toilet paper storage room or something. So step three is to close off the ends. There are two or possibly more types of crimpy covers. The clamshell looking one, which is the silver one that I have, and a bell looking one. So for the clamshell one, you have to first string it through, string a crimp bead through and crush the bead, and then close the cover around the bead, using the pliers to bend the hook and turn it into a little loop. And for the bell looking one, which is the one that I'm going to be using, you put a bead through first, crush it, 
and then fold the cover over it. And when you do this on the first end, you can leave some space between the cover and the other beads. And then when you do this to the other side, push all the beads to the finished side, making sure that all the beads are really tight next to each other. And then put the crimp bead as close as you can to the other beads. I like to use my nail to add a tiny bit of space so I could fit the cover over it again. I also like to trim the wire before closing the cover so that the ends are completely hidden. So step four is the finishing touches. So take your jump ring and loop it to the end, and then loop either a toggle ring or a lobster clasp, and then on the other side do the same and loop either the other toggle clasp or another jump ring, or you don't have to add another jump ring. There you have it, now you have a simple and stylish necklace that honestly looks even better than if you were to buy it from a store that probably mass produces low quality and overpriced necklaces anyways. I love that there's so many ways that you can design a necklace and like the possibilities are basically endless. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you. And yeah, bye! <laughs>